Welcome back to Talking Shop with Shop Saber. I'm Brandon, back with Jesse, episode 14, Talking Controllers today. Oh, this is an exciting topic. I'm glad we get to dive into this one. It's going to be a lot, I think. It's going to be a lot. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot going on here. You're going to do a lot of talking today. <laughs> I do a lot of talking every day. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest with each other here. I'm not You're good at much. it. I'm really good. I like the sound of my voice, apparently. But uh, yeah, we're kicking this thing off. We got Garrett back in the office. Welcome back from vacation. Big Welcome red. back, Garrett. You know, uh, wasn't the same without you, Garrett. Uh, it was better. It was better. <laughs> <laughs> Not. So we did great. Um, pat on my back and your back, Jesse. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for running the computer over there. Now I can't push buttons, though. That was kind of fun for a little while. It was fun. But nevertheless, uh, it's demo days. It's exciting. We got people on the way to the building right now. Yeah, so here we go. We're going to be uh, today, you know, is... Uh, Demo days, so we're excited to get through uh, this episode and then go hang out with a bunch of cool people and yep. show off machines and have some fun. It's so be a good day. Yep, it's going to be a good day. But uh, we're going to talk controllers today because the real question, Jesse, is what's a controller? Well, Brandon, a CNC controller is the brain of a CNC system. A controller completes the all-important link between the computer system and the mechanical components of the CNC machine. The controller's primary task is to receive condition signals from a computer or indexer and interpret those signals into mechanical motion through motor output. So you sounded like a robot there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was... Read the definition of what a controller is. That was really, that was really impressive. I, I felt like it was good reading. It was great reading. It sounded very robotic. So explain that. Let's go. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit. So basically, it is what makes your machine do everything right you know the reality is is your controller is the brain behind the machine um you have motors you have bearings you have frame you have all the stuff we've talked about in the past 13 episodes right yep but your controller is really what ties everything together it's what makes motion from mechanical components and electronics i mean it's what kind of connects the two of them together if you will right um you know there's something that you have to think about beyond that and that is the controller software as well you right know, the controller itself typically and not in all cases, we'll touch on this, not in all cases, but typically has some sort of a, you know, hardware associated with it. And then you have software. Software is what's actually doing the, the computing, if you will. And, you know, what is it, you know, a CNC controller or CNC control, essentially, uh, is the package of electronics and software that takes the input from most people use G-code. You know, it's, it's various pretty standard. Form. Yeah, pretty, you know, it's a various form of G-code, you know, like, you know, standardized G-code is yeah. pretty standard across the, the industry. And, you know, obviously ShopSaber uses standard G-code. But basically, you're either taking G-code or CNC control panel and, you know, you're converting it into a signal that the machine motors can understand and essentially telling it to move an axis. So, you know, when we say axis, that generally means the X, the Y, the Z, the W, Correct. A axis, depending on how many. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, certain machines have more axes than other. You know, the most common movement is a three axis movement and yep. that is the most common machining application out there um, but you can get into fourth axis you can get into fifth axis um, there's some crazy machines out there that have more and there's some less capable machines that only have two you wow. know so there's a lot that to think about with it and basically what it means is you have a piece of computer component a piece of computer com is that a thing I, piece real, of computer right. component i don't know if that's right um there's a you have a component. computer component yeah that is then outputting through software to your motors, telling your motors to do something. Move, turn on, turn Move, off. Move, turn on, yep, go to this position, whatever you're doing. Right. Um, and the reality is, is, you know, where can you find a CNC, you know, controller? Where, where, where is common applications where CNC controller exists? Well, one of them is high-speed machining. Right. Right? You know, the other one we touched on briefly. Three-axis machining. Yep, three-axis machining. And mm -hmm. then you have five-axis machining, which is just... A lot more moving parts, right. if you will. Right. Um, you have just horizontal milling, and then you have your, you know, like dual column machinings. Boring machines. Boring machines. That's another common one. Um, you know, rotary machining, like a lathe. Right. You know, right. there's there's lathes out there that now use CNC controls. Robotic arms. Robotic arms. You know, and I think to touch on that, like people are like, well, what's a robotic arm? Well, that's what a welder. Yeah. Robots that do welding. Robots that do painting. Yeah. Car assembly robots. Right. Exactly. We have them everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. I and mean, there's a lot of lot of different robots that you can think about there. Um, Edge banders are actually another one that you think about. You know, they oh, have yeah, CNC that. control behind yeah. them. You know, yeah. they're not as sophisticated, and that goes back to when we talked about how many axes are you controlling. They they aren't controlling 
nearly the access control there. You know, generally it's just a belt, so it's more right. of a conveyor system, but it's still using CNC control to a point. Um, so there's moving components, there's different things that you can get into. And, you know, the one thing you have to always think about is how can one controller fit all applications? Well, it can't. I mean, that, the answer is you, you can't do it. I mean, when you look at that list we just talked about, you know, high speed machining versus, you know, a robotic arm. Right. They're not going to They're be different the same applications. Yeah, yeah. They're different applications entirely. So you can't necessarily run the same thing. I mean, can you? Yes. Yes. You can. But one of them is giving up performance. You know, one of them isn't going to run to its full capability because the controller really isn't going to fit the application evenly. So you almost need a controller to fit the application. Exactly. Yeah. You know, glad you picked up on that. Yeah. Jesse, that was wow. Um, I was just getting to the point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the beard got in the way of your thinking. Um, talk about, you know, let's talk about the shop saver method for a second, Jesse. Yeah. Okay. We have one of the unique things about us is we have a couple of different controllers that we work with. We do. You know, in, the majority of our machines, 99% of the applications is the this, WinCNC controller, right? Correct. You know, and the the benefits of WinCNC is it is able to be adapted to your application. It's flexible. It yeah. Flexibility. Correct. And that's one thing I really love about the WinCNC control itself is that, you know, for one, it has at machine CAD cam. Which, which is awesome. Yeah. I mean, when you're running a CNC machine, there's going to be times when, oops, you made a mistake. Right? right. You've made a mistake as the operator and you forgot to put something in there that needed to or you put something in there that shouldn't be in there. And I love the fact that at the machine you could pull up your CAD cam and make a change on the fly. Well, it's a huge time saver. Go yeah, back who, to your desk and fix that and yeah, bring it back. Or for the guys who don't have a desk in their shop and they're literally drawing from home or their office or wherever else they're doing it and now they have to drive somewhere. Yeah, super inconvenient. Yeah, super convenient, right? But you have at machine CAD cam. So that's, that's awesome. a huge advantage. Um, especially if you're a CAD guy. I mean, just as an example, let's put out, you know, because demo days, let's use a demo days example. Yeah, perfect. You know, you're a, you're a door shop, right? Yep. And Jesse, you come in and you say, Brandon, I need you to build me some cabinet doors, right? Yeah. Okay, Jesse, what do you want? Well, I don't know. I have no idea. We pull up the door library at the machine and I can show you different style doors. And then awesome. you say, I like that one. That perfect. one looks good. But I need 10 of them. All I have to do is select that design, hit 10, boom, output to the machine right there. Machine I don't have thing. to go draw something. I don't have to go mess around. Like That's the benefit of some of these CAD softwares is they simplify life. And so as the operator, all I got to do is point and click. Point and click. And that kind of touches on our next you know, topic of what ShopSaber has in the WinCNC is it's point and click technology. Right. You're not having to manually program in G-code. There's controllers out there that you still to this day write out g91 you know or you know typing in x54 like can you do that in our machine absolutely yeah why would you though but it's the matrix right let, let the g code be the matrix right Remember right matrix yeah like, i love like it neo? neo yeah he's like yeah. doing that like sweet. red pill or blue pill oh man i got which one are you taking i'm gonna take them both and we're gonna find out what oh. happens god we should see the trilogy then they should do that like oh neo. The and they just take a yeah. handful yeah, they take a handful of them it's like skittles uh <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so it's like the matrix. Like I said, you don't need to know G code anymore. Right. I mean, back in the day, you, you kind of had to know it. Yep. And I know there's people out there listening to us right now that are like, I can write G code. Well, you are way more intelligent than me because I'm not going to write G code. Right. Like, <laughs> we'll let the machine do it. Yeah, exactly. If I write G code, we don't know what it's going to happen. I don't so. have that kind of time. No, I don't have that kind of brain. Um, but the reality is, is you don't need to know it. I mean, you CAD cam has come so far that it handles all that for you now. So, can you modify G-code out of a shop saver machine? Yes. yes. The answer is yes. Yep. There is an absolute, absolute button there to do that and change that and mess around with G-code all you want. Have all you people, fun. <laughs> yeah, all you people who are like, I don't want to do that. Good news. <laughs> Me neither. So you're not going to do that. Yep. So yeah, that's one advantage. Then you have the at machine storage, right? Yeah. Solid state hard drive. Yeah. I and mean, that's a huge deal yeah, because A, you don't have a spinning hard drive, so less failure, right? Right. B, it's really fast. You yeah, know, it, it, is. it pulls your file up you know, almost instantly. And there's a lot of room there to store files. That's the one thing I love about our controller is that, I mean, there's like 250 gigs of That's storage. Yeah, when you think of a typical CNC file is nothing, you right, know, it's right. the smallest files. You know, you really don't have to, you know, when you look at a G-code file, there's not a lot to them. So you can use your CNC machine for data management. You know, I have myself personally on the machine that, you know, on the machine computer that we run here, I have files that have customer names on it. So I just go to that customer's name and all their files are in that folder. That's awesome. You know, it's I don't convenient. have to, yeah, I don't have to go, well, where did I save that? You know, right. it's all at the machine. 
So even if, you know, you come back, you I cut you those 10 doors, right? And you come back six months later and you say, those were great. I need 10 more. I, I just go, your, yeah, I go right to your folder, pull up your file. Boom, done. Easy. You know, where a lot of machines don't have any of that computing power at the machine. So now what do you do? You go back to your desk, drag try to the find customer that. back. Yeah, you got to go try to find that file for one because yep. where did you save it? Was it on your laptop? Was it on your desk computer? Where where'd you save it? Was it on the network? Maybe. Did you put it in the recycling bin? It's in the clouds. Yeah. Is it the cloud. It's in the cloud. What is the cloud? That's where I put it. Is What is it though? It's up in the sky. Where is it? Isn't that where it's at? How do I get to it? I have no idea. It's but the I've cloud. Lost Nobody knows. Clouds. Nobody knows the cloud. Uh, that cloud looks like uh a cloud. So, you know, that is a benefit. Like I said, you know where everything is. And then, you know, when you start getting, you know, a little in further, or further, blah, 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 blah. Spit it out. Let's try this again. When you get, oh, yeah, back this whole thing up. Ah, all right, here we go. Um, when you start getting further in depth, nailed it. Got it. There we go. Um, and you have a problem. Let's be honest. Everybody's going to have a problem at some point in their life when they're running a file. Okay. Either you're going to mess something up. Heaven forbid something happens with the machine. Heaven forbid just you forgot to push a button. Right. Right. Whatever the case may be. Right. The last thing you want to do is get frustrated because you don't know what happened. Exactly. Like, I hate that. Like, yeah. I hate working on something, and then it's not working, but I have no idea why it's not working. Well, we'll spend hours trying to figure it out. Correct. So, instead, with ShopSaber, you get lifetime tech support. Now, I can't speak for everybody, but one of the benefits of our controller is you have an onboard diagnostic system. Yeah, it's awesome. So, you could actually have our team log into the machine and perform some diagnostics with you. Find out, is the machine having a problem, or are you just pushing the wrong button? Right. You know, like, is it you? It's within minutes. Yeah. You're not spending hours tracking things Exactly. Down. And then we can also help you with the CAD CAM side of it. So maybe your file's just wrong. We can help you with that because we can see it. Doesn't that suck? Like, you call up, like, hey, I'm having a huge problem with my machine. I don't know what it's doing. And then to find out it's you. It's it not your machine. It doesn't suck, though. At least I'm glad we found out. <laughs> it's your fault. It's not the machine. But, you know, you know, it's funny that you say that because, like, I'm one of those guys that, like, I'd prefer it to be my fault. Like, yeah. when I call up. I feel better when you're like, you just pushed the wrong button because then I'm like, oh, thank God I don't yeah, have a problem, right? right? You know, right. like, God, I don't know what I would have done if I had a problem, you know? So, like, I'm glad that it's like, God, please tell me I screwed up here, you know? Like, it's, it's a good thing, but it's nice because you're not sitting here days, weeks, you know, months trying to figure right, out a problem. Right. You, it's literally just call, one phone call, we'll, we'll log in. Downtime doesn't equate to dollars. Yeah, so that's one of the benefits of like a Shop Saber style controller is that you have that onboard diagnostic. You know, we also have expansion capabilities where with the WinCNC, like, if you don't buy it with an option today, there's a good chance, not every option, right. but there's a good chance that you can change or grow with your business in most applications. Yeah. You know, we've got people that have said, you know what, I want the ball screw drive system because I know the benefit of the ball screw, but I can't afford the tool changer then. Right. So they add the tool changer in the field later yep. on. That's one of the benefits of this controller is that you can kind of adapt. A lot of these dedicated controllers that are out there, they're great, right? There's benefits to it. And we'll touch on that here in a little bit. We'll talk about dedicated controllers, but the, the downfall is, is you get what you paid for, right? Right. Whatever yep. you bought is what you have. That's what you get. You don't get to change it. Nope. So there's, you know, some disadvantage of those style controllers for that. Um, and the other advantage to like the WinCNC controllers, it is made in the USA. Yeah. It's USA made. <laughs> Something you know, we love. And USA supported, you know, you have support not only from us, but you have WinCNC support as well. That's important. Yep. And then, you know, from a product development and modification standpoint, it, it's fit to shop saver. Right. Like we've taken WinCNCs out of the box package and then, heavily customized it so it fits shop saber specifically so while you might be able to go find you know other machines out there that have win cnc specifically right you don't have the version that we have it's not the same like, i guarantee you nobody's control out there running win cnc is as advanced as what shop saber has you know for what we're doing you get a lot more for your money you know and when you start looking at that you know let's take the flip side okay we, we talked about dedicated controllers right yep shop saber uses a dedicated controller too on one level of machine do we not we do the uh, ism yeah so the ism uses the mitsubishi controller it's the M series controller. Um, they call it the M80. And, uh, you know, the benefits to this style controller is it's very dedicated. There's not right. a lot of, you know, fluff in it. You know, it's not designed for versatility. Let's no, be honest. It's, it's designed for speed yep. and accuracy. Yep. So it is high speed, high accuracy machining is what it's designed for. Um, in fact, the Mitsubishi M series controller is the world's fastest controller. So that's kind of cool. Right. It's fiber optic connected, correct? Yeah. So it's got fiber optic communication inside it. So, you know, realistically, because everybody's like fiber optic, I've heard that I have that in my internet, right? Like you probably do, a lot of like, things do. you know, but it's, you know, what, what is fiber optic? You know, it's consisting of or using thin, you know, flexible fibers. Um, the advantage to that is, you know, it has glass core, Yep. you know, and so through light signal, it sends 
you know, essentially communication. Right. And it's very little loss of strength throughout the entire process. And it's very fast. Yeah. And that's what I was just going to say is, uh, you know, the transmission over longer distances at a higher bandwidth, you know, and, yep. you know, obviously bandwidth is data transfer rate. And so with that, the electronic cables can carry more data quicker. So that's the advantage to fiber optic. So it is a so lot of... So your machine will respond faster, right? Correct. I say it's a lot of information in a short amount of time. Yeah. So your machine can do more quicker. Yep. And you'll notice that with a fiber optic communicating machine is that the controller can communicate faster. Now, there are some other caveats there that you have to have the correct motors and the frame and, you know, there's right. things that just, will... You can't just put the controller on anything and expect it to correct. perform. Correct. Exactly. I mean, it, there's just certain situations where it just won't, you know, but like, you know, as an example, Mitsubishi, it's competition is like the Fanuc style controller, mm -hmm. you know, or Fanuc or Fanuc. You know, wh whoever wants to pronounce it whichever way. But the reality is those controls are direct competitors, you know, yep. a little fun story here is the ISM at one point was going to be the ISF. We were going to actually have a, a Fanuc controller. A on Fanuc it. controller. Yeah. And actually Mitsubishi was like, hold up. Pause. Hold up. Let's talk a second, you know? And then they came in and they put their controller on our machine side by side with the Fanuc controller and we ran some simulation. And to be honest with you, Mitsubishi blew us away. It, wow. it did a lot of things that we didn't realize they could do. And the real advantage was nobody had seen a Mitsubishi controller on a router before because it had never been done. Mitsubishi, when you think of Mitsubishi controllers, you think of like the million dollar Mazak yeah. mills and lasers. Yeah, you know, and big machines. Yeah, like you think of these big milling centers, but right. you've never really thought of routing with a Mitsubishi controller. Until now. Until now. <laughs> and then, so Mitsubishi was like, let's try it. Let's do, do it. it. You know, like, why not? So the guys over there are awesome. You know, Scott Strocky, I'll give a shout out to that guy because, you know, he's from Mitsubishi specifically. And he's come here and he's helped us. And he, we got a video with him in it. But he's he's been a big part of our push forward in, in the electronic department, you know. And a lot of companies have, let's just say, some competitors out there have started to try to, you know, Copy, copy us, us a little bit, you know, and they've started to bring in the Mitsubishi components and they think that that makes them as good as us, you know, but the reality is, is they, we have 20 years in the making of working with Mitsubishi, right? We've got tuning and we've got stuff that you don't just pick that up overnight. Yeah. This isn't an overnight. Yeah. We're just going to be like shop saver tomorrow. Correct. Yeah. Happen. And that's the advantage of working with Mitsubishi is that they have the experience out there. Um, now, you know, when you look at high speed machining, high accuracy, you're not doing versatility with that type of stuff. It's right. designed for people who are like, you know what? I need to get as much done in as little time. And it's the same thing over and over. Yep. It's process machining is what it's called. Yep. You know, you're doing the same process over and over as fast as you can. Right. It's not designed for the guy who wants to go out and build custom molds every day. Right. You know, it's really, you're not gaining the speed in those applications. You know, it's for the guy who's ripping out two dimensional parts in most applications. Yeah. Cabinet parts, <laughs> milling, you know. Again, going into it, uh, aerospace parts, yep. things like that. That's where you start seeing the Mitsubishi controller's advantage. Um, you know, it's got bi-directional tool changing capabilities as another advantage to it. You know, you, so the rotary tool changer can go both ways. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I was going to say is you see these, like, there's so many companies out there that market. And, then, and there's two types of, you know, three types of tool changers really out there. You got a linear style tool changer, yep. which like we run on our yeah, machines. The linear rack is great because it's, it's the least maintenance tool changer out there. You have less maintenance with a linear style rack because there's no moving parts. Yeah. If you break one position, right, you have all the other positions still available. It doesn't My jam up. It doesn't have a problem. There's no moving parts in terms of the, the rack, so you're really not having to lubricate bearings. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Right. Low maintenance. With how fast machines are today, the time savings is very little Minimal. between a rotary and, a, and an actual linear style system. The time savings generally in a linear system is because of the fact that you don't have less maintenance. So you actually save time over the life of the machine because you're not maintaining the machine as much. Now, going one step further, when you get into rotary tool changers, there's actually two styles of two rotary tool changers. And the most common is the standard belt and pulley style, right? Yep. They have a, a belt and a pulley that spins it, you know, one gear head, yeah, things like turning. that. Yep. And it's one direction. It's clockwise typically or counterclockwise for some, but I don't know why. But maybe if you're overseas. Yeah, most of them are clockwise. And the problem with that is you have 10 tool positions, right? Yep. Or some of our competitors who have eight, right? Eight. And which weird number, right? Um, but, How do you determine yeah, that? Like, hey, we're almost there, but we'll go with eight. Um, nevertheless, so you have 10 tool positions. Yeah. And you're on tool number, you know, 10. Yeah. But you need tool number nine next. So now you have to click all the way back around to get to nine. So the time that you saved with the quote unquote rotary tool changer, because it's right there with the gantry, you know, and for anybody who doesn't know what a rotary tool changer is, it's a carousel essentially, it, you know, like a, I guess 
a merry go round. Yeah, yeah, like, like the ones at the fair. Yeah, so it sits next to the gantry. It's mounted to the gantry in most applications. And whether it's hanging from the gantry or suspended from the frame, whatever, um, it's typically a spinning rotation with your tools hanging off of it. Yep. Now, there's a few different designs that are out in the field. You have some that are enclosed entirely. Um, they say it's better because you're keeping the dust out, but the okay. reality is it's that's it's just marketing because right. the dust is still on the tool and then it goes in the carousel and now it's trapped in there. So no. <laughs> it's really not <laughs> any, yeah, it's not better. Um, <laughs> it's just more moving parts again. Um, and then the other issues with certain carousels is that you're limited by tooling's diameter because the carousel has to obviously go in and out of the carousel. Yeah, your bit can only be so long. Correct, it can only be so long before it bottoms out or so wide in diameter before it hits the side of it. So you start limiting tool functionality. Yeah. Um, the other thing is weight. Because you're spinning those tools, you have to balance them. People don't think about that. If you don't I didn't balance think about that. Yeah, if you don't you balance your carousel, you end up off center and then it's putting uneven load on your bearings and all the components that are associated with the carousel, which is now more maintenance. So you actually have to balance your tools. That's something to think about. Yeah. Um, you also have to think about the fact that obviously every time you spin it, you're putting wear in there, right? Yep. So the more you have to cycle around, the more wear you're putting in At there. At some point in time, that, that thing's going down. Correct, exactly. So it's maintenance. Like I said, it's not a yep. maintenance-free thing. People think it is. You know, Big machines do have them and have had them for years because it was kind of the way to keep speeds up. But you'll start to notice as you, as you look at the industry, it's kind of changed drastically. Linear tool changes have become very popular because machine speeds have picked up so much. Yep. So as you get into this, you start looking at different applications, but then you have to think about, okay, not only that, the machine's moving front to back, side to side with this carousel attached to it. Well, that's more weight that it's got to carry. So inertia. Right. And so it's off, offset weight too. Correct. It's offset. So you're, you're in even or in even uneven, in, in even uneven, <laughs> uneven wear. God, it's not my morning. Um, uneven wear on your, your own components because you're carrying more weight in certain applications. So again, your accelerations, decelerations, there's disadvantages to a carousel. Okay. I'm not going to deny that. So how do you overcome that? Well, you have to upgrade it. So upgrading it requires a higher powered motor system, right? And right. that's where like the Mitsubishi controller comes into play because we can go to a new level of motor. It's, yep, you know, a high inertia motor essentially is what you end up in. Um, that being said, you also have to take into consideration that with the motors, you have to know exactly where you are, pinpoint where you are on the machine. So you have to start having data points that the machine can keep up with itself. So that way it's making sure the gantry is staying square all the time, can make changes on the fly, certain things like that. But then you start thinking about the tool changer. We haven't even got to the tool changer part of it yet. You know, you're spinning counterclockwise or clockwise, whichever direction you're going. Yep. That's a time loss, right? It is. So then they have a secondary, and you know, long story short here was the, the other type of carousel is a bi-directional tool changer. So you can go both ways. Correct. It goes both both ways. And that's what Mitsubishi brings to the, brings, brings. Brang. That's God, what they bring. That was, that was brang. That's what they bring um, to the table. Mitsubishi bring that to the table. So Mitsubishi brings that to the table. Yeah. And... It, you know, not a lot of controllers have the ability to control a bi-directional tool changer, to be honest with you. That it, doesn't it, sound like it. Yeah. Sounds like it's something that could be complicated. Correct. Most of them are single direction. They only know one direction. Yep. And it's because, and I'm not talking about the band, one direction here. One direction. direction. Garrett really got all excited over there. I saw him like starting to like Turned to head bob a little kind of jam. He, he had like, a song yeah, going direction. there. Turn off the one direction movie. But the reality is, is the controller has to know where the tool changer is at all times. If it doesn't, it can't go both directions, right? Right. So a lot of these systems out there use a micro switch you know or a pulley with a belt so it can only go one direction mm -hmm. with the mitsubishi style controller we have a direct driven uh motor so it's a mitsubishi servo directly to the actual carousel through a, a gearhead and that motor has an encoder system on it so it knows where it's at at all times at all times it knows where it's, where it's at. lost exactly and so it has the ability to to rotate in both directions so again the shortest distance traveled is what it's designed for yeah, it's a lot faster to go from 10 to 9 when you can go backwards. Correct. Exactly. And so there's where the, the tool changer being a carousel makes sense because yeah. now you've saved time. Yep. You don't save that much time when it's spinning one direction. No, you don't. You know, because it's really, I mean, if you race the machines, I'll promise you, it's probably a second or two. That's it. There's and not a huge benefit. We talk I'm going to tell you, 99% of you people out there listening, as much as you think one second's going to make a difference, your machine's going to sit idle half your week. Yep. Your machine's faster than you are. So the reality is one second doesn't change your, you know, your, your day. I mean, and you're paying for it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even if I can cut five minutes out of the entire day with my machine, it means my machine sits five minutes longer in most cases. Most people aren't running it all day long. Right. You, you just aren't. 
you know, and it kind of goes back to, you know, when we start talking about controllers, people start thinking that they need these loaders and unloaders, right? You're right. God, how many times do you hear that? We've got to have a loader. I hear it all the time. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. 99% of people don't have any reason to have a loader, unloader, other than that sales guy sold them a loader. Yeah, unloader. you need this. Yeah, like, it's the, the stupidest thing. I, I mean, I, I hate to be blunt like that, but I'm going to be blunt like that because it's the dumbest conversation we have to have is because people believe in their heart that the whole reason I need it is because of the loader, unloader. Like, dude, I'm telling you right now, a, a loader unloader is slower. It's like, going to slow you down. Newsflash, loaders unloaders aren't fast. Right. They're designed for robotic use. That's the advantage to them is people aren't there, but they're not faster. You're accomplishing less work. So again, the loader unloader doesn't add speed to your machine. So again, it goes back to, you know, these guys are like, well, I got to have the carousel with a loader unloader. Like, no, you don't. <laughs> like I'm telling you right now, you know, 90% of you yeah. don't need it. And you start getting into that, you know, and the loaders on loaders also have their own maintenance that are just ridiculous. And loaders on loaders don't carry certain materials. Believe it or not, they don't work with every material. They don't? There. Yeah, weird, right? Um, you know, the suction cups have to get a hold of the material. So if the material's porous, it doesn't pick it up very well. Weird. Or if there's dust on your sheets, it doesn't pick it up very well. So Dust in the shop while yeah, you're cutting? Right? What? Who knew? Right? Who knew? I love going to the shows sometimes and you just watch these people's machines. Like, the sad part is that consumers don't get to see it. But when we're doing those setups, you know, walking around the show. Because so we're there, you know, a week before the show opens, you know, having to set up booths. Right. Shop Saber gets there. We unload our machine, plug it in, and we're set up like in the first day. And just then we could walk, Yeah. And then we could walk around for three or four days watching everybody else set up their booths. And my favorite thing to do is watch other people crash their machines. Because they get these loaders on loaders set up and they think like, that's going to work awesome now. And then they run it and then drops the sheet halfway. Like, it's just hilarious. You just bust a guy. Yeah. Ben and I sit there and just laugh. You know, I have I so much too. video on my phone of people just messing stuff up. And, you know, most of the time it's just, it's just fun to watch because you're like, if customers can see all of this, like they'd see how much of a hassle it is, you know, it's not as, it's not as seamless as people think it is. But, uh. Nevertheless, going back to the tool changer, I mean, that's the advantage to that bi-directional tool changer is that you have time savings that actually saves you money. Yeah, it's makes not, sense. Yeah, it's, it's actual use. Um, the other advantage too with like a Mitsubishi style controller is there's no homing associated with it. It does have battery backups on the drives. Oh, it's awesome. So if the power goes out or if you shut the machine off or whatever, you didn't truly shut the motors off. The motors always have power going to them with a battery backup. So they're always going to maintain data connection. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that everything you're doing is going to require that. Um, what you're going to find with, with, uh, you know, a lot of machines is that like, again, the Mitsubishi controller has no homing because of the absolute encoders. Well, the wind CNC controller still uses absolute encoders. Yep. So it still knows where it's at at all times. The only difference is, is the data it's stored has to be brought back up. So when you power it off or you lose power, or whatever, you just hit the home button. It homes, then it brings back that data. Okay, it's okay. Now I know this is where I'm at specifically, and I was here. I need to go there. So it's not that it's not absolute. It knows where it was. It just doesn't store that data in, in Correct. indefinitely. There's no backup. Correct. There's no battery backup on that. So yep. that's the big difference there. Um, now, some machines don't remember that stuff. There, there's some controllers out there that actually don't store the data at all. So, so you shut it off and it forgets everything. Correct. It loses its position. So it, it loses home. It loses zeros. And so when you power it back on, you can't go back and start where you left off. With our controllers, in either case, you can start right where you left off. That's one huge advantage. That sounds super inconvenient. Yeah, could you imagine that having to three hours into your part and the power goes out because of a thunderstorm and you have to start over? No, like I'd be livid. Dude, I'm getting people, angry thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, like then they have to go do a restart, right? And okay, start from code one, go. And then it's air cutting for three hours to catch back up to where it was. I've seen it happen. I would be, I would be so mad. I'm yeah. getting mad just thinking about yeah. that. Just sitting there like, watching my machine cut air. Correct. You don't make money doing that. Nobody's got time for that. No. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't no one got time for that. So yeah, when you think about that, that's one advantage to our machine too. Um, and then one of the major advantages to the Mitsubishi controller is it has on the fly advancement and compensation. So it'll correct itself. To a level. Yeah. There's, so we set parameters, you know, yeah. obviously we're not going to let it just go willy nilly, but yeah. we set parameters and it can pick up on harmonics, for example. So if you're cutting with a bit and you're creating a harmonic, example, aerospace machining, yeah. you're working with certain, you know, aluminums and such, and you will get harmonics. It's just simply, it is what it is. It's tools create, it. yeah, tools create harmonics. Um, and the nice thing is, is the machine has the ability to stabilize it and do certain things where it says, okay, my Y1 motor needs a little bit more torque and I'm going to take a little torque away from Y2 to stabilize that or vice versa. You know, it, it, it's intelligent enough to do this stuff on the fly. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, and that's one of the advantages to like a dedicated controller is you have that. And that's why we laugh when you hear these people that are like, rack opinion's just as good as ball screw. 
No, mm, it's sure not. It's, it's never going to be just as good. I don't care what anybody tells you. They're lying to you. Yep. What they're failing to tell you is that rack and pinion isn't as good, but there's controllers out there that can overcome that. Yep. And it's called backlash compensation. Back, I was going to say backlash yeah. compensation. And that's how they overcome it. So when yep. they start pointing at these $150,000 machines, like, see, the $150,000 machines use rack and pinion. Yeah, and they also use a controller that's worth $45,000. <laughs> so your $60,000 machine doesn't have right, it. Right. Sorry, man. <laughs> Like I know the sales guy said so. But yeah, the sales guys, they don't even know it. That's the sad part. Like yep. Half these sales guys out there, they just, I, they were told to tell you that, right? Yep. Pa- compare it to that one. Yep. Pretend an hour, I don't know nothing. I don't have to. They don't, they don't even have the understanding that the controller isn't the same. Right. Like, they don't. The controller has backlash compensation in it when you get to a Mitsubishi style controller. That's you know? a fun conversation when you're talking to a guy about a $20,000 machine. He yeah. brings up the backlash controller and you have to tell him, sir, there's, there isn't one. Yeah. There's nothing at $20,000. I, I, I promise. Like, if your machine doesn't cost you eighty grand, you there's zero chance that you have the, the controller. I mean, you just don't have it. You know, you don't have that technology in there. It's, yeah, zero chance. That's why, the, that's why there are $150,000 machines. Yep. We all would charge $150,000 if we could get away with it. The reality is we don't need to. We can bring the price down because our controllers don't cost us the same amount of money. Right. There's a reason why the ISM is more money than the IS. Makes right? sense. It's a different controller. It different. costs more money. Yeah. There's more technology there. So as you get into backlash compensation, what does that do? Machines moving down the Y axis, right? Right. It notices a change. It can make a change on the fly. Right. Correct you know, that. Correct that error. Yeah, that compensation. So it's a huge advancement. Now that's why we use ball screws because ball screws have a lot less change. Right. So it allows us to use a controller like WinCNC where we don't have to worry about, yeah, we don't you have don't backlash to, yeah, compensation. Yeah, we don't have to worry about adjusting on the fly. Yeah, like we could set it once because think about this, okay? You have a ball bearing, right? Yep. And it's a... It's a you know precision fit ball bearing. Yeah. As it moves up and down that Y axis, that ball bearing stays in the same position. Yes, it does. You know? It's it's it's. It's not anti- going anywhere. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not. There's no slop in a in a ball bearing. Just, the ball bearing would not work. So as it moves up and down, we can measure it, and now we can set that measurement in the controller, and we know that every time it moves up and down, it's going to be a very similar measurement. Right. So we set that parameter. Correct. With a rack and pinion system, as it moves up and down that Y axis, you can't measure it. No, things are because change. every time it moves. It's going to measure different. Yep. A wear. There's a degree of wear every time. But bigger, you know, piece of that puzzle is the backlash. That's right. The three to five thousands that a gear has to have to turn. Yep. That means every time it moves and changes direction, it's going to shift a little bit. You you can't take a constant measurement when it's changing. Right. So that's the difference of why we choose to use a ball screw is because then our controller can be more accurate with less data points. We have more control. Correct. And so as you get into Mitsubishi, that's where we step the level up to that next level. That's where we want to be able to have backlash compensation and do just a little bit more and have a little bit more control at higher speeds. So you can spin things a little faster and not have to worry about any backlash. You know, you don't have to worry about inertia. Losing precision. Correct. Yeah. Right. So it allows speed. You know, that's the advantage of that. And then, you know, as a dedicated control goes, that's really where its advantage comes into. The, the disadvantage to a dedicated controller is it's dedicated. Yeah. It only knows today's data. Yep. So put it in, in this way of thinking. If you go out and buy a computer today, okay? Okay. And you have a graphics card in it. Yep. We don't know what's going to exist in five years, right? We don't. Have no clue. No idea. You know, who, for all we know, we're going to have microchips in our eyeballs, and well, that's how we look at our computer screen, right? Who knows? Yeah. But the reality is we can only set up for what we know today, okay? With a dedicated controller, that's what you get. You get what today. today is. That controller was built with today's software, today's hardware, and everything. And that's their big, like, selling point is that it's a 20 to 30-year controller because you shouldn't have to replace a whole lot of things in there, right? It's built for that. It's right. purpose built. The problem is, is in 20 and 30 years, how outdated is that controller? It's going to be super outdated. That's why we won't you, even take that long. Correct. And when you start looking at computers, it takes five years. Yeah. And you're completely outdated. Completely. I mean, you're not running computers in five years that are anywhere near what they can, they're capable of doing. So now you have a machine that in five to 10 years is outdated entirely. Entirely outdated and you're stuck with that. That does me a lot And of that's good. where retrofitting comes in. So people have to spend a bunch of money and retrofit their controllers or something fails. Okay? Yep. Heaven forbid something does fail in five to 10 years and now you have a controller that potentially you can't get parts for. So that's where the overseas stuff is a big risk because yeah. you have these High dedicated risk. controllers with components you may not be able to get. Yep. With controllers like Fanuc and Mitsubishi, at least you know you can get the components, right? They're not going anywhere. They're not, they've, they've been around. Yep. So that's the advantage of those dedicated controllers, but they cost more money. So... You spend a little bit more money for these name brand controllers, but you get, you know, a little bit more reputation with them. Right. But the downfall is if something new comes out in five years, you're not retrofitting it to the Mitsubishi controller or the Fanuc controller. In it. You're just not going to do it. You can't, yeah, it's not happening. You're buying a new machine. Yep. If you want that feature. Yep. With like the WinCNC controller, 
you have the ability to retrofit. Right. So in five years, you can replace the computer components to newer computer components or whatever the new technology is yeah. and retrofit forward. Yep. So your machine becomes less outdated. So there is an advantage to having that style of controller. There's a versatility. So when you start looking at this, you know, we've talked a little bit about the Mitsubishi controller. We've talked a little bit about the WinCNC controller. Now let's talk a little bit about the differences between a calculator style controller and a computer control. Yeah. You know, because we just talked about a dedicated controller, which is like the highest end, right? The, yeah. The Fanuc, the Mitsubishi, those. But we haven't talked about the low end yet, okay? We talked about that, and we talked about the middle section where you got the WinCNC style controller. Yeah. But what about the one below that? Let's talk about the calculator control. And I call it the calculator controller because it looks like a calculator. It does. It's same, it's, it's a same PLC, size. Yeah, it's a PLC-based controller. It's basically what it, it is. It's a TI-83 graphing calculator. Yeah, I think that's what it looks like, That's right? what it looks like. Yeah, you play Snake on it. Yeah. It's super awesome. Yeah. Oh, I'm a graphing calculator. I left it in your room. Um, but the reality is, is the calculator style control is this little hand pendant. Yep. Most of them are coming out of China. You know, China. They're, they're Rich Auto is the let's, brand. I mean, let's, let's be, be honest. honest. You go yeah. to Rich Auto's website and you can look at all the controllers and you can find them for a few hundred bucks. Um, and the downfall of that is, okay, you just bought a $40,000 machine, right? Yep. And they gave you a $250 controller. Sweet. So, but there's a lot of capabilities in that. Yeah. I mean, think about that. $40,000 machine with a $250 controller. You're cutting corners. Yeah. I mean, you're giving up control. That's you what are. you're giving up. And the the limitation to a calculator style controller is one you you can't see anything on it right right the screens are micro right and all they show is data points so right. they show an x coordinate a y coordinate a z coordinate they don't show you what the file looks like there's no preview screens on them you know so you can't see what you you put the flash drive in there you pull the file off it and you hope you loaded the right file no i love that about our machine being able to see it right there on yeah. the screen yeah i mean any the any of the name brand controllers you should be able to preview your file right yeah and then the other thing is, is you can't store any files at those. Well, no. Those calculators have no memory to them at all. I mean, literally your iPhone has more storage on it. Yeah. I mean, the thing's small. Look at yeah. it. Your iPhone, though, has more storage than your machine controller. That's scary. How much did you pay for your iPhone? Oh, like 1200 bucks. I okay. Think. So that's, that's why. Because your iPhone costs more money than the than controller. Than the controller. For your $40,000 machine. Think that's, about that. That's Let scary. that sink in for that's a second. That's scary. Yeah. And then you start looking at it and you say, okay, well, I need multiple files. Well, you can't have multiple files on the controller at one time, so you have to have it on a flash drive. Then you have to drip feed it off the flash drive because, again, there's no computer there. Right. So it, there's no storage, so it only can read as fast as the flash drive can flash memory. So without a hard drive, how fast is that data communication? It's slow. Yeah, it's like Super slow. watching AOL. Yeah. Right? It's... I was just going to make that. <laughs> you beat me to it. Good old AOL. Yeah, you've got mail. Um, but the reality is, is like that's how outdated it is. And um, do you remember when you could change the guy's voice? <laughs> yeah, it sounded like I a do. butler. Remember that? Like, you did a really good job, sir. <laughs> you've got to mail. You know, like yeah, yeah. I remember that. That was a good time. Um, but nevertheless, the uh, <laughs> you, you can't remote into those controllers either. So no, going back can't. to when we were talking earlier, like what if you are having a problem? Yeah, you're getting on the phone. I have a customer of mine that told me this. He's like, I had a problem with my controller. You know what they told him to do? Unplug it and send it to him. Unplug the controller. Yeah, just, just unplug it and send it to him. Throw it in a box and send it to us. UPS. How do you run your machine? You can't. He was down for almost two weeks. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a new machine. That's why he bought a shop. Yeah. So that's crazy. The reality is, is that happens because they can't fix it over the phone. Right. So if there's something wrong with it, you have to send it in. They have to look at it over and then they have to send it back to you. More than likely, they Here's the best it. part is, right? What if nothing's wrong with it? And they send, you send it to them. You wait two weeks and they send it back to you and tell you nothing was you, wrong with it. You programmed wrong. I think I'd burn the machine to the ground. Right. I don't know about that. Yeah, that sounds like an insurance issue. Yeah. Um, that but the reality is, is you know, that's the manufacturing differences that you get is that these hand controllers, are, they're designed for ease. That's what they're designed for. Yep. Take all the thinking out of it, right? All of it. But the problem is, is they've taken all the thinking out of it, so there's literally nothing you can do. It's very limited to what your capabilities are, so it doesn't take long before you can outgrow that. Yeah, if it's taking controls out of your hand. Yep. And there's a lot of people that are like, those controllers work great. You're right. If you have no experience in any other control, you're probably going to love it. Because you don't know what you don't know. But for the guys that are advanced. But as soon as you start trying a little bit more, you're going to outgrow the capabilities of that controller. Absolutely. Or if you've had any experience with a real controller, you, they, you'll throw that thing against the wall. You'd be so done. So there's a huge difference between a calculator style controller and an actual CNC controller. You know, And the, the difference is really behind the scenes. Right. What the controller is capable of doing, the computing power, the, the communication, the data. Yeah. Everything that's there. You know, Let's talk about look ahead for a second, right? When you are cutting, okay? Yeah. Your machine is either looking ahead or reading in real time. Right. The problem with reading in real time is data communication can slow your machine. Sure So can. we've all been on the computer and you get the little spinning wheel of death. That's yep. what we call it, right? <laughs> and everything. You're like, what, what happened, right? If that happens, 
without look ahead. Your machine literally is stuck in la la land trying to figure out what to do next. So it's just sitting around yeah. trying to figure or out where am I it going? It makes a random movement. It does something that just it doesn't know what's coming next, so it does what it thinks to do, right? And it destroys your project. It destroys your project, exactly. And that's called missing a step. And that's the problem is these style controllers generally can't run with servos. They're generally a stepper motor driven system. So again, there's no there's no amplifiers at all on the motors. You know? So without amplifiers, you your machine has no idea where it's at Driving it has no blind. idea yeah it's blind it's basically yep. like going back in the world with gps versus no gps yeah the servo motor is gps it knows where to go it knows what's going on it tells you if there's problems ahead it tells you if something doesn't look right if something went wrong the steppers is like driving around with your map right you're going to find out that road's closed when you get there yeah you are you're going to find out that something you took a wrong turn two hours ago when or you, you realize you're in the wrong your spot two yeah. hours ago yeah, when you're in the wrong spot so yep. th that's the difference is that the plc controller or the calculator controller, excuse me, can't look ahead like that. It doesn't have the capability. So, you know, there's no air monitoring. If you do something wrong, it doesn't know you did something wrong. You tell it something went wrong. Well, if you're not really good at CNC, you aren't going to know you did something wrong until your part comes off and it doesn't look right. Right. It sounds like it can be pretty frustrating. Correct. Where the CNC controller that has a brain and has, you know, servos can tell you something went wrong before you know something went wrong. That's nice. And it stops itself. Yeah. It's a smart phone. It saves you a lot of time, a lot it's of money. It's the difference of the rotary phone versus, versus the smartphone. Versus smartphone. You know, not everybody likes a smartphone, but it makes life easier. It's true. So that being said, now you got to think about, you know, PLCs versus PCs versus PLC PCs. What? Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of Ps. There's a lot of Ps in there. <laughs> so, you know, reducing cost, you can look at like the PLC was the way to go for years, right? For years, CNCs ran off of a PLC. But CNC changed when the PC came out. Yeah. You know, when, when PC advanced, you know, there was really a push to start attacking the market from a cost standpoint. PCs made CNC more affordable. That's what brought the price way down. Okay. Okay. PCs allowed people to get, you know, technology in their fingertips that used to cost them $150 or $150, $150,000. 150000 yeah, yeah, sorry. A few Jeez. zeros there are missing. I missed a few zeros there. Minorly important. Um, but yeah, so when you start looking at that, the PC advanced CNC quite a bit. But there was a downfall to that, you know, is that PCs were limited. There's a PC isn't designed to run a CNC machine. Okay. So you hear a windows controller and everybody gets scared because there's nothing there that's designed to run a CNC. Machine. Right. They're right. There is two style of PC controllers. You have the PC, which is going to be like your mock style controllers, which is a downloadable program. It's just running off of the best buy computer with no hardware installed, just a piece of software. Yep. That isn't a true CNC controller. No, it's, it's a not. CNC program software Correct. that works, but it's not actually a CNC controller. Then you have a PLC PC, which essentially is going to have a PCI card typically, or some sort of data communication device inside the computer. So you have the PC for the ease and convenience point and click. Yep. But if you open up the case, there's hardware inside there. Well, good news. If you open up that dedicated controller, there's hardware inside there too. It's taking the computer board out of that dedicated controller and putting it into a PC. It's combining the best of both worlds. That's awesome. Yeah. So it gives you a little bit more control. Um, and, what? you know, it's a little bit more money than a PC controller. That's what I was But say. it's a lot less money than a dedicated controller. Yeah. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's like the middle ground. Yep. And so PLCs has a reliability and backwards compatibility that a lot of people want. There's advantages to having a PLC. But, you know, there's certain applications where that just doesn't work for you. And as you get into a PC PLC controller... It brings the best of both worlds, as I mentioned, and a PLC PC combines, you know, versatility from a controller because you can add certain options like knives and cameras and, you know, different things that you need to get into, but while increasing the performance long-term over a standard PC, because now you have a dedicated brain. So your computer windows is running yep. off of its controller, right? Off of its hard drive yeah, or its motherboard. Yep. But then your CNC machine is completely separate. It's running off of its dedicated control boards. Right. So there are two brains in there doing two different things. Two different functions at yeah, the same time. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't slow you down. It allows you to do more. So, you know, it's kind of a quick touch on that. But, you know, there are different controls there. So having that computer there does have a huge advantage. And so anybody stuck in the 80s at this point saying, like, there should not be a PC at your controller is wrong. I'm telling you right now, run away from that person. because. Yeah. They need to embrace technology. That's the reality is you're buying a CNC machine because of technology. That's where we are in the yeah, world today. That's where we are in the world today. PCs are everywhere. Your, yep. your car has them now. Tesla's drive from them. You know, Refrigerators have dude, them. Dude, I can open my garage door remotely now, okay? If we figured out how to open garage doors from miles away, 
we can figure out how to make a computer work at a CNC machine. Dude, my in-laws have this refrigerator that has a little app. I can pull up the app and see what they have in their refrigerator. Like, there's computers and refrigerators now. Can you check to see if they have any cookies? I don't know. Let me get my phone out. <laughs> what if um, you had some milk? No milk. God, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, I'm sorry. But, you know, when you look at the, the differences, like I said, standard Windows PC controllers versus dedicated Windows, you know, there's two different levels there. And having that card or that dedicated brain allows Windows to be more sophisticated. Windows doesn't hurt your machine then. If you're running off of just a piece of software, yes, Windows can be an issue for you. Yeah. There's no doubt there. So you have to look at what kind of Windows control is, is present. There's a lot of machines out there that have Windows at the machine that Windows does not affect the performance of the machine. Right. So there's a lot of things that you have to think about with that. And so, you know, as you get into it, dedicated controls have hardware. That's something to look for. Yep. Ask if the controller comes with hardware. Does it have hardware? Yep. And find out what kind of PC is with it. If it's a standard PC, if it's a refurbished PC, if it's a fanless PC, it's not a CNC controller. Sorry. No controller has fanless. It's just without a fan, you're not cooling. Without cooling, you're overheating. You're overheating. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, you got to think about that kind of thing. You know, there are hardwares that are hardwares. There's hardware that's typically comes, you know, with a dedicated purpose. What's the purpose built controller look like, you know? And then, you know, what's it physically doing beyond the PC? The brain is in the PC, right? But how is it getting its data to the machine? Figure that information out. And then, you know, what does it mean when there's a dedicated controller? You know, well, what it means is there's stability. Dedicated controllers have stability. There's more speed, better performance, and increased machine life. Something you can count on. Simple, yep, it's, it's basically reliability. Yep. And the reality is, is with a PC there, you have some expansion capabilities. You do. So you don't outgrow a computer capability typically because computers can be upgraded. They can. You can move forward, you can adapt, right? So really today's conversation was about controllers. There's a lot of different controllers out there. You know, you have a lot of different options, yeah, but find do. out what you're getting. You know, call a shop saber, you know, uh, consultant here. Yeah, give us a shout. You guys will go through it. I know we all will. We'll, t we'll yep. spend the time. If you're not sure what you're getting, ask. It's ask a, what you're getting. Let somebody explain it to you. Because if you don't know what you're getting, you're going to end up with something that you thought you were getting that probably isn't what you think. Yeah, you should always ask. Yeah. Always know what you're getting. Always be fully educated. Most of the sales guys that you're going to talk to on the market don't truly understand the controller aspect of it. So get a comparison. Ask the questions, go through it, make sure you're getting what you need for your application. Again, yeah. like I said, there's tons of different control methods out there. Not one controller fits all, you know, there are different applications for different things. Be leery of the companies that have four, five, six different controllers. They're probably price driven more than they are performance driven. It sounds like you're going to be uh, upgrading before you know it Correct. with a company that has four to five different controllers. Correct. I mean, you got companies out there that will. They're, they're yep. taking, you know, we have an Austrian controller or we have a Chinese controller here yeah. and we have the Win CNC controller here or we have this over here. You got to be careful of that. You should be able to develop a control system that is pretty standardized. Yeah. We have a dedicated controller for our high speed machining applications and then you have the versatility controller for everything else. Makes sense. There should really not be a need for a whole lot other than that. It sounds like you got too much going on if you need more than that. Correct. Speaking of too much going on, it's time to get demo, demo days. days. We got demo days going on here. So, yeah, I think we uh, we're gonna go have some fun with demo days here. I think uh, you know when you look at it, it's it's gonna be a fun day because we have people here that are gonna be able to see this stuff in action. It's gonna be fun. You know, I, I, anybody listening right now that didn't get to make it, we're gonna have more demo days coming up. Don't worry, sign up for the next one if you're not in the market immediately to buy. You're coming up, you know, in the future. Get in here. It's a good time. Yeah, it's a great time. We're going to have uh, some software demonstrations. We're going to have some vacuum pump demonstrations. We're cutting on the machines. Going to put Router Bob to work. We're, we're going to put Router Bob gonna to put work. We're going to put Router Bob He's to gonna work. He's going to be a busy guy. We have some snacks. That's my favorite part. I love snacks. Got to love some snacks. Have we got any cheesecake? No cheesecake, bro. Oh, that's a bummer. But there were some donuts down there. There was a sprinkle donut that I saw. Eyes on it. I'm getting that one. You already sure. claimed it. I'm going to get it. All right. I'm going to go down and I'll eat race that. You. Don't, don't give me that look there, Garrett. Garrett's already got that look like he's going to go steal my sprinkle I'm going to push him down before we I get will through trip the him door. Down the yeah, you trip him, I'll push I'm him. I'm just letting everybody know if Garrett had an accident this week, it was not me. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Garrett, we're looking at you. Why didn't you hook a mic up today, Garrett? Yeah, you're kind of boring without a mic. Mike didn't hook his, or Mike. Mike didn't hook his Garrett up today. Mike didn't hook his Garrett up today. Garrett didn't hook his mic up today, so literally he's mute over there. He can't say a thing to us. We he just says it's too early. early. Nothing you can do about it. Apparently, when we film at 4.30 in the morning, Garrett's not awake yet. Oh, hair's looking good today, though. Yeah, how does he do his hair that good at 4.30 in the morning? I don't know, but it's on fire. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. Um, well, I'm Brandon. I'm Jesse. Thanks for talking shop with Shopsaver.